thank you for the brief introduction and thank you for this opportunity uh, to present to this uh, uh, excellent audience of uh, intellectuals. Uh, just as uh, briefly introduced, uh, my name is Dr. James, hailing from Boganda Medical Center in Tanzania, in Mwanza. And um, uh, I will take you through uh, this uh, uh, case of, uh, of a bilateral subdural chronic uh, chronic subdural hematoma of the patient uh, in the postpartum period. Um, a brief introduction to subdural hematoma. Basically, it's a basic accumulation of uh, blood within the subdural space uh, due to uh, tearing of bridging vessels, which uh, connect between the dura and the uh, and, uh, and the brain surface. Uh, literature shows that uh, a huge percentage is due to trauma, and uh, a certain percentage has been reported due to long period, long term anticoagulant use, but also as spinal anesthesia, as among one of the complications. Uh, uh, by nature of uh, the disease progress, usually with, if it's within one to three days, we consider it as acute. Uh, four to four to two weeks, two three weeks, considered subacute, and. Um, uh, over three weeks, is categorized as a chronic subdural hematoma. Uh, again, uh, another interesting uh, uh, to, to mention is a, a, a subdural post-dural puncture headache, which is uh, a frequent complication uh, of uh, spinal anesthesia. And uh, with that, I would like to introduce the whole aspect of uh, postpartum subdural hematoma, which is uh, uh, described by some authors as a, a, a further complication of uh, uh, post-dural puncture headache uh, due to the same mechanism which involves uh, leakage of CSF fluid through the puncture and uh, pooling of the, of the uh, vessels. So we all know that uh, headache in the uh, postpartum, that is after giving birth, is a common uh, is a common occurrence, uh, but uh, uh, we know several causes such as pre preeclampsia, hypertension, caffeine withdrawal, tension and headaches, encephalopathy, cortical vein thrombosis, uh, meningitis, and uh, a few others. Subdural hematoma, which is uh, of our, uh, which is of our topic of interest, has been mentioned, uh, but also um, in most literature. Given our case is a study of a patient of a post spinal anesthesia, we know that uh, post zero puncture has been mentioned as the most common cause of headache in those which have especially underwent spinal anesthesia, especially for uh, 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 cesarean section or could be hysterectomy. So, uh, 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 patient, can you please uh, move your slide? We only have the first slide showing. Uh, how about now? No, it's not moving. It's still the first one there. Uh, sorry for the... Uh, how about now, please? Could you... Still same. Still not moving. Maybe you just remove it from the... Yeah, it's moving now. Okay. It's moving Thank now. you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Uh, so... Uh, are we on the same page uh, at the case report on your side? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Thank you. Uh, yes. So um, uh, this was the 27-year-old uh, who presented with uh, severe headaches uh, for over two weeks after, after delivery. Uh, the patient had undergone cesarean section uh, for delivery, and the indication was uh, it was by her choice, given that she had also had a previous Cesarean section for the initial uh, uh, delivery. Uh, again, important on uh, history uh, was that uh, there was no history of trauma whatsoever, whether due to assault or due to uh, uh, head injury, uh, so that we could rule out uh, any other causes of um, uh, headaches. So after a, a thorough investigation and, uh, and a multidisciplinary approach, I were consulted as a neurosurgery team and uh, uh, initial workups which were are uh, unremarkable. Uh, we went on ahead with a CT scan of the brain, which um, 
showed uh, uh, we showed um, um, a, a, a bilateral subdural hematoma. This hematoma we can see here with the red arrows. Uh, we can see hematoma uh, uh, which is mixed up with a, a subacute portion and uh, uh, and a, a chronic portion on both sides. And um, uh, eventually she was kept on oral management. However, after a few days of, um, of uh, uh, in, in exactly, it was four days of oral management, she came back with a worsening of headaches. So the patient was uh, cancelled on the other managements, uh, despite the, uh, the, 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 the oral management, and she was, uh, she consented for elective uh, surgery, which was in this case done as uh, 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 emergency, uh, where uh, in this image, and I went to bar uh, holes bilaterally, uh, indicated by the green uh, uh, zeros here. Uh, these are uh, so this was done under local anesthesia, and uh, this uh, the patient in the postoperative period she recovered uh, uh, quite uh, uh, normally with no complications, no no uh, no neurological deficit, and follow up was done. Uh, at two weeks, at one month, and three months, uh, where uh, stereo CT scans were done. And uh, we can see uh, that at three months, the patient was uh, cl uh, clinically stable with no uh, neurological deficit whatsoever, and there was no recurrence. As we know, uh, chronic subdural hematomas have a tendency of recurrence. However, there wasn't such any in our patient. Uh, in brief discussion, uh, we know that spinal anesthesia has been practiced for uh, ages, and uh, rather it is uh, it regarded as safe worldwide. Uh, again, uh, cesarean section is a common indication uh, for those who are clinically eligible and fit for it, uh, just as the case was in, in our patient. Uh, in particular, uh, the, the prevalence of um, subdural hematoma in the postpartum period uh, has been reported to range to one in 500,000 to uh, one in a million as reported by Giao and colleagues. However, its true, con its true incidence and prevalence in our setting is yet to be established. Uh, in our particular case here, only one case has been uh, reported at our center, which is this case. And that's why you found it of interest to contribute to the literature of this condition. Uh, primary presence with headache, just as any other conditions, uh, the many other uh, conditions which you have reviewed. And uh, this could easily uh, be confused with any other uh, uh, causes of headache. So it's important that uh, uh, after a thorough checkup, a uh, CT scan can be uh, done or MRI uh, to rule out any other intracranial causes uh, after, after uh, a good multidisciplinary approach and review. So um, some risk factors have been mentioned by uh, some, some, in some studies, especially by Amorin and colleagues who studied uh, 35 patients post uh, spinal anesthesia who, who, who showed up with us um, spinal uh, 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 with subdural hematoma. However, this was a general overview. Uh, in his study, there were only two patients who uh, had undergone, uh, who were of obstetric, obstetric cases. Pregnancy was shown uh, to be one of the contributing factors, multiple punctures, use of anticoagulants, uh, and brain atrophy, uh, especially in the elderly. Uh, however, uh, these are only contributing factors, or not uh, exactly the exact risk factors. We can also, he also reported that there was a notable 15%, uh, sorry, 15 cases where there was no particular case. So we could not solely uh, relate it to uh, these few risk factors. However, uh, a um, few uh, systematic uh, reviews have been done on this particular topic, where uh, the recent review by LK and colleagues also uh, involved 232 cases uh, with 291 patients reported, uh, for which 48% of these were uh, obstetric patients, uh, for which, uh, which can give us a picture that uh, probably uh, the, the, the uh, 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 obstetric patients and uh, uh, spinal anesthesia, uh, there could be a, a relation. Again, this is yet to be proved uh, statistically, as uh, this was rather a uh, basic statistical report. So uh, the risk factors are yet to be established in particular, but uh, the contributing factors have been mentioned. 
the pathophysiology uh, has been the, the, uh, the known mechanism which has been uh, widely accepted is that uh, in a setting where there's a puncture uh, due to this, uh, uh, which is the usual root of uh, spinal anesthesia, uh, this would lead to leakage of CSF. Now, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, depending on the amount lost, uh, usually what is lost is enough just to not cause any, any uh, disturbances. However, uh, in an assumption of a loss, loss of CSF, a caudal displacement of the brain and uh, could lead to stretching of the emissary veins. Now, the interesting thing about the anatomy of the veins is such that uh, those which are connecting to the uh, emissary walls are rather thinner than those which are connected to the subdural space. Uh, now, that essentially, uh, uh, with the dynamic stretch, uh, uh, it could easily lead, lead to the weak points being uh, pulled apart, and that would lead to uh, micro bleeds into this uh, in, into this subdural space. And, uh, and these, as we can see on this image here, this is subdural space. Uh, these uh, um, small uh, uh, veins, emissary veins, which are connected to the dural sinuses in a, sec in a setting of bleeding, they will lead to a, a collection. And that would, uh, so far, this has been the accepted uh, mechanism. However, uh, a study by Zaydan also mentioned that May, uh, large use of large bore holes, large large bore needles for epidural spinal anesthesia could also contribute to the uh, to the uh, large loss of CSF. However, that is also a case to be studied. Uh, moving on quickly to the uh, 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 management, we can, um, you can uh, uh, the management again is um, uh, rather also, or it could be conservative, or it could be uh, um, it could be surgical. In the sake of conservative management, this is usually reserved for those patients who are maribound with significant comorbidities, or those who are uh, asymptomatic despite having uh, this collection on imaging. Uh, several authors uh, uh, who have been uh, mentioned in this, in our chat here have uh, all reported uh, successful uh, conservative management where patients where there was no uh, uh, fatal, where there are no fatal uh, effects. Uh, however, uh, moving on further, um, uh, surgical management uh, is again of uh, 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 has been also mentioned. Uh, just as uh, in a setting of uh, uh, a collection, we tend to take it as any other subdural collection, uh, whether acute or, or chronic. The guidelines are still the new, the same neurological neurosurgical guidelines. Uh, which have been mentioned in uh, several literature, uh, such as Greenberg and uh, Humans, uh, where with in the sake of a uh, uh, neurological deficit with a uh, deterioration, uh, surgery could be indicated uh, after a good uh, selection of patients. With also uh, in after good um, workups, uh, ruling out um, uh, the the other comorbidities. So the indications in uh, acute versus uh, uh, chronic uh, 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 are the, the ones which have been um, uh, recorded in literature. Um, when it comes to the surgical management, again, uh, several cases here have been, uh, uh, have been mentioned here in our table, uh, where uh, the choice of the operation done depends on the, the amount of uh, the size of the hematoma, uh, uh, the safety uh, the, uh, basically depends on, on what the team decides. Uh, it could be both bahol, it could be an, a craniotomy, uh, it could be uh, a, a large craniotomy or bahol, or a decompressive hemicraniectomy, as has been mentioned by uh, Lim and Gyo et al. And uh, in, our, in our study here, we employed a, a bilateral bahol under local anesthesia, which was uh, uh, and successful. Um, all these particular cases uh, were uh, cases with good surgical outcome. However, only one case here by Gioa et al. from Italy uh, uh, reported a case, uh, a fatal case, despite uh, surgical intervention, as this was a patient who condition suddenly changed. Uh, and uh, by the time of uh, surgery, the, the clinical condition was really uh, done, and the compressive endocrinotomy was done to try to rescue the, however, it was unsuccessful. So 
surgical intervention uh, can, cannot is, has been reported with good outcomes, uh, as well as uh, medical management for this particular case, for this or case of um, uh, epidural um, hematoma in the in this uh, group of population of patients. Uh, in conclusion, um, given the multitudes of uh, of uh, causes of uh, he uh, headaches in in this population, uh, it is important to consider that uh, uh, it is important to have a suspicion of chronic subdural hematoma uh, as one of these uh, possible cases uh, and recognition of symptoms disciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary, that is between the uh, obstetric team uh, with the neurosurgical team and the emergency team as, as well as radiology and eventual anesthesia is important. And uh, imaging should be uh, uh, ordered in the setting where, um, in a setting where we could suspect any of these um, uh, 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 complications, especially when a headache is involved. Surgical management, uh, following irresponsive conservative management, can be done, and uh, it can uh, have good uh, outcomes. Um, and. Uh, in conclusion, as mentioned, we are happy to have contributed to literature of uh, uh, the literature of uh, these are our references, several references uh, of this study, and uh, uh, this uh, our, our paper was published in the Journal of uh, Case Reports and uh, Images in the Obstetric and Gynecology, January. So we are happy to have contributed furthermore to the literature. Uh, this was the first case reported in our hospital, uh, but also in uh, uh, Tanzania. Uh, before you is, a, is the image of our hospital. Uh, you are welcome. Asante sana, karibu Mwanza, Tanzania. Thank you for your attention.